Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the mysteries of the origin of water. That element that we all take for granted because it's pretty much everywhere on the planet and we're also made out of it for the most part. But where exactly water came from and how it appeared in such quantities on the planet has actually been a mystery for a very long time and still has no definitive answer. And even though by mass Earth contains about 0.02% of water, Despite the tiny amounts of water present, it's an essential element for everything we know around us, including of course life and including of course intelligence. But water has been continuously lost to space for billions of years. As a matter of fact, the sun's radiation breaks down the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen then escapes into the depths of space. And so when trying to calculate how much water may have been lost uh, by using for example isotopes of xenon, the scientists discovered that at least an entire ocean worth of water has been lost since the creation of the planet. And interestingly, the scientists today believe that even when Earth was extremely young and very very hot, because of the pressures from the CO2 atmosphere and because of the overall conditions, even though the temperatures were about 200 to maybe 230 degrees Celsius, there was actually enough pressure to maintain the liquidity of the oceans. In other words, despite the bombardment from the sun, despite the ridiculous pressures and temperatures, liquid water existed on the planet for a very long time, with maybe only one period when it wasn't actually possible during the collision with Theia when the moon was created as well. But despite this, we still don't really understand how water came to be and where it originally actually came from. But there are two major theories. One says that Earth always had water, it was basically created with water and water was present from the beginning. The other says that it came through asteroids and various collisions from outer space. Although initially we also thought it was maybe comets, because comets do contain a lot of water, but the water in comets apparently is very different as we discovered once we studied them in more detail. And one of the biggest confirmations of this was during the Rosetta mission when the probe established that the water here is extremely different in terms of the isotopes and composition. The water on Earth is very unique and it's not the same as the one in the comets. And so the new assumption was that, well, it could have come from asteroids. And so various asteroids started to be studied and the scientists tried to analyze and try to discover water in some of the asteroids to see if any of them match with the water found on planet Earth. Now obviously today we know there are a lot of different types of asteroids, some are more metallic, some are more rocky, some are more icy. And the assumption was that maybe we're going to find the same water as we have on Earth in these more icy asteroids. But so far the results have been kind of negative. So it was actually kind of surprising that even the icy asteroids don't seem to contain the same type of a material, the same type of water as we have on Earth. What's even more surprising, very recently a study came out studying the so-called Enstatite chondrite meteorites, which are actually known for being extremely dry. But some of the more recent analysis suggested that these extremely dry asteroids do seem to contain enough hydrogen and enough other material to hypothetically bring about three times more water than we currently find on Earth, assuming of course periods of billions of years and a lot of these asteroids coming to Earth over time. And surprisingly, the isotopes of water found in these asteroids and also even other materials seem to kind of match what we find on our planet Earth as well. In other words, the assumption that these asteroids are extremely dry was kind of incorrect. They do seem to contain just the right amount of water and just the right kind of water. But they are relatively rare. They only make up about 2% of all of the asteroids we usually find on the planet. Nevertheless, by analyzing minerals present in these asteroids and comparing them to the ones on Earth, including the isotopes of metals like calcium and titanium, all of this was matching with what we have here on the planet, suggesting of course that these unusual dry and somewhat rare asteroids might actually be responsible for water after all. And what's more, they also seem to contain nitrogen. The mystery of where nitrogen came from is yet another mystery that we have on our planet. Nitrogen is an extremely important component, it's the biggest component of our atmosphere and its origin has always been a mystery. But these asteroids also seem to contain enough nitrogen to explain where it came from. And so looks like the mystery might have been solved, but wait a second. And then another paper came out. Paper claiming something completely different and presenting a very valid point. And also using an asteroid, but this time a very different asteroid. A very ancient asteroid. One that came from Mars. 
and it's of course the paper you can find in the description below that deals with a different type of an asteroid known as Northwest Africa 7034, unofficially nicknamed Black Beauty. I guess because it's black and because it's kind of beautiful. This unusual asteroid, as I mentioned, came from Mars and was most likely released from the surface of Mars via an extremely powerful collision. Now, obviously, we don't know what collided with Mars, but it was a very powerful collision, coming from most likely this region you see on the screen. And because of the age of this asteroid, we think that it happened about 4.45 billion years ago, when the solar system was extremely young and Mars was only about 90 million years old. In other words, when Mars may have looked something like this. Okay, possibly not exactly like this, this is just an illustration, but it did seem to possess liquid water. At least that's what it seemed like when the scientists analyzed this asteroid, discovering that it contained chemical reactions that most likely were happening inside the very extreme, very hot conditions during the collision, but also in presence of water, liquid water. And it also, once again, contains water as well. As a matter of fact, it seems to contain the most water of any asteroid we found coming from Mars. And because this is the second oldest meteorite we've ever discovered, and it does have a lot of water on the inside, this of course is a very interesting discovery and an extremely important piece of puzzle to try to understand where water actually came from. Because once again, what this implies is that approximately 90 million years in its existence, Mars already had the liquid oceans on the surface. And considering the previous explanation, this would not be enough time to bring so much water to the surface of Mars through simple asteroid or meteorite collisions. So this implied that the water was already there from the beginning, from the creation of Mars during the early solar system. And the implication from this discovery suggested that as the planets are created, as the terrestrial planets are created, in this case Venus, Mars, Mercury and of course Earth, may have already contained water on the inside as they formed from the protoplanetary disk. And eventually some of them, like Mars, lost this water, but some, like Earth, maintained it for a very, very long time. And by analyzing this rock, the scientists established that it wasn't just water that was present there, but also quite a lot of oxygen, huge amounts of oxygen. So in that sense, it does give us a pretty interesting picture of early Mars, which wouldn't really be far off from what we see on the screen here. Mars may have been very similar to what Earth looks like today. And the other implication here is that because of these various collisions and because of all of this activity in the beginning, many different greenhouse gases may have been released and produced just the necessary conditions for Mars to maintain liquid water and habitable conditions for at least a few hundred million years, possibly even longer. Also confirming something that we've known for a long time, that Mars has an extremely fractured surface up to about 10 kilometers in depth. So basically all of this indicates that Mars received a lot of collisions and many of these collisions created very interesting conditions on the surface, including liquid water. But with time, all of this was lost, creating the Martian surface that we know today. And so both of these ideas and both of these theories do make sense. There is evidence on both sides. Yet there is no definitive answer of where the water came from. Because there is enough evidence to suggest it was on Earth and it was on Mars from the beginning. Evidence that is very obvious in the Black Beauty meteorite. Yet on the other hand, there is also evidence from these very dry chondrite meteorites. And the evidence here is also quite suggestive. And so maybe the best explanation so far is, why not both? Maybe it started with water already being present and maybe more water was added and some more water was released through various collisions over time. But even this idea right now still needs more evidence. In other words, because of this meteorite here and because of this recent analysis, we're sort of back to the original mystery of not really knowing where the water on Earth came from and what managed to maintain it for so long. But we're getting closer to this answer and more of these studies and more of this type of analysis is needed to try to figure out what exactly is happening here. For now, it seems that it's still kind of a, a mystery, but it has at least two really good answers. And being able to answer this is extremely important in our ability to try to discover what happens in other planets, in other star systems, in other places where life might also exist. But I guess until we learn more, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.